bullets. 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 Hello, all our chums out there. You have um, a pile of burning questions that are in search of some useless answers from your deeply unqualified agony aunts, Toya and Robert. So, little lovey, what are a few of the many burning questions we have? Green 323 Turbo. Question. What is better, the UK, the office, or the American, the office? I've seen neither of them, lovey, so I can't offer an opinion. For me, it's the UK office. I think this is a very clever series that is so about how different we are culturally. I love the UK version. The actors are all iconic. They play it so beautifully under. None of them are performing. It's so real. You can tell that they improvise it. I love the characters and the cast of the American office. But for me, Slough is where the office belongs. Thank you for that question. Now, the name of this next person is S-E-G-A Clown Boss. Dear Toya and Robert, my mother passed away recently. We're really sorry to hear that. You are 28. I live alone in the home and I'm afraid of people. Can I ever find the same tenderness that she used to give me? My condolences. This is the hardest thing in my life was losing my mother, so please. It is possible, it is possible to find com a community of the spirit. We have community on the outside of shared interests, but we also, there's families on the inside that conventionally fall under the heading of faith communities. But I've also found in my experience that if we work together with others intensely and creatively, where we share a common aim, then there is a bonding on the inside. Uh, for example, working creatively with musicians on tour in very intense conditions, something is possible in your field, in your life, you will be able to go outside and there are people waiting for you to be in touch with you and to welcome you into their hearts and their community. I'd say if you are afraid of people, you need to find empaths and they are out there. And I've often been in situations where Robert's been away for a long time and I've been incredibly lonely and just desperate for someone to talk me back into reality. And I always thought I would head to a gospel church. These people are so beautiful and so welcoming. And I think you mean by community, religious based communities. You, I, by the sounds of it, the loss of someone, you need to be with people who have spiritual contact with people who've passed over and who believe in that spiritual contact. I'd head for a gospel church. I'd even head for a modern Christian church where you find empaths who understand your grief and they understand your fears. We don't have to be alone. We have a right to be alone, but we don't have to be. And you are obviously desperately missing a role model and a mother who showed you unconditional love. And you need to be with people who can give unconditional love. And we are really sorry for your loss. And thank you for reaching out. ATS. I don't like the typical music of the 80s. Ooh, boo. I was a metalhead, but I always loved Toya. Hooray! And I was so happy to get her music CD later on. I wonder why you never sung on King Crimson. Why have I never sung on King Crimson? That's a very good question, dear. Essentially, I suppose that we, we've never worked together very much in the our professional lives have often diverged. Sunday all over the world. Well, we did some good things. It's a stunning album and it's, it's being got ready for re-release, remastered. And I'm working with T on Power Pop. Posh Pop. Uh, it's powerful too, is Posh Pop. And that work is really, really good. 
I think I've never sung on King Crimson because of the strictness and the nature of it. It's all so, within such rigid counting, and I'm a very instinctive performer. And when you're in King Crimson, you can't cross the boundaries that often. There's not that much um, accessibility to cross those boundaries without messing up the balance of the whole band. And I think looking at your lyrics and looking at your history, you are a male orientated band. And looking in the audience, you know you do not have to queue at the ladies. You'll see about five women in 2,000 people. That's very true. What would happen to the history of the band and moving forward if I sang in it? Would it be the end? Well, that's a very interesting one. Uh, King Crimson has its own characteristics by now, and I think to shoot off in another direction would need an entirely different form. It's very male. Rick, Carr, you asked, Robert, is your guitar always tuned to non-standard tuning for these episodes? Because he's obviously trying to copy you. Do you ever use old standard tuning anymore? I think by NST is meant the new standard tuning and this is always a new standard tuning. I have two guitars which are in the conventional EADGBE tuning in the cellar. One is a Gibson J45, same model and about the same age as the one used on in the Court of the Crimson King. And I have a 1957 Les Paul that I also keep in EADGB that we used on Wild Thing. Yeah, beautiful sound. Lunch. But essentially, uh, I'm in new standard tuning, the C pentatonic tuning. So keeping to the guitar, Mark has asked, Robert, I've been trying to play the guitar for many years and struggle to play chords with my sausage fingers. Do you have any suggestions that may get me playing? Oh, this is great. You far away, Robert. You have sausage fingers. Having sausage fingers is no... I'm just putting my guitar on for I'm those who are listening. I'm just moving backwards gently, then. Well, there's, there's a really good exercise here, so you carry on. Go on. Um, yeah. I, would, I would recommend that you focus on calisthenics. Which is just what I was going to show. Look at this. So it's strengthening of fingers. It's not just about having sausage, sausage fingers. I have had this strung in nine new, gauge. New standard, two, oh, slinky. Slinky. Super slinky. Super gauges. slinky nine gauge. Because for me, up here, I don't have enough finger strength. So down here, there's a calisthenics you can do, which I have found absolutely brilliant for strengthening my stretch. And it might just help with the accuracy of what you are calling sausage fingers. And believe me, I've seen master builders play guitar and they have very robust hands. Robert? Yeah, I can show an exercise, uh, but essentially they would be the same as my wife. But better. The key thing in ascending is when ascending, leave the fingers down. My wife has been practicing guitar very... I mean, I go to bed, my wife's up until one, one in the morning, morning. practicing, astonishingly. What I would say is this, how you play your guitar is how you live your life. So if you have aim and discipline and focus in your practicing and your life, sausage fingers are no impediment to progress. I mean, have you ever known anyone not physically be able to play because of the size of their fingers? I've, my, the person teaching me guitar is a very robust, strong, large man. And I would have thought his hands were too big for guitar and he's, he plays like a rock god. So I've never known sausage fingers be a problem. That's correct. Okay, so practice, 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 
practice calisthenics. calisthenics calisthenics because we all have finger weaknesses and ascending is a lot easier than descending it, it just keep going have faith have the faith um mad max 66 robert is there one audio effect pedal rack or software that you would just not be without well may i preface this by the the overall the, I'm not interested in gear. Adam <laughs> Jones of Tool, pal Adam, I'll get to this in a minute. Adam Jones of Tool was asking me about this. And I said, look, I'm not interested. What is important is your attitude, the attitude and intention that you bring to your playing. For example, I, whatever guitars, whatever amps, whatever fuzz boxes I've ever used, essentially it comes out the same. The same. Now here's a good one. I saw Chip Corea and Herbie Hancock at the Carnegie Hall duet concert. Stunning. When they changed piano, the sound of the piano moved with them. That is not possible. However, who and what they were was the sound. But since, all right, look, here we are. Is the one thing I can't do without, I would say it's a Fernandez sustainer. Throw a switch and it goes from this to this. So. lead line from David Sylvian and Robert Fripp's Wave, for example, or... Heroes. Instead of having a, an amplifier turn up loud, pointing the right way, at very low volume, throw the switch and you get sustained. So you are the man or one of the leaders of creating soundscapes and looping. And for you to say you're not interested in effects and pedals and software, don't you think that's a bit of a contradiction? No. <laughs> no, I don't. Mad Max 66, I tried to get an answer for you. Well, I'm sorry, sir. This is a lovely one. Mama Bear, when I was a little girl, people would ask me my name and I'd always say Toya. Thank you, Mama Bear, that's lovely. Jordan Maxwell, I'm only 21 and I feel like my life has no purpose. I have no idea what to do. Oh my God, we gotta help this person. I go between wanting to be a music historian, fabulous, fabulous Jordan, an artist, fabulous, a museum curator, fabulous, or a primary school teacher. These are all great choices and intelligent choices, Jordan. I have so many overlapping interests, it's hard to know what to dedicate my time to. Really clever point. Do either of you feel this way at my age? And how can I fix things so I'm not panicking about the future all the time? Jordan, thank you for this question. It's, it involves all of us. It's a stunning question. I was always aware that my life had a trajectory and at 21 I was just setting off for London and my, my course in life was set, not the details of it, but the general trajectory. What about you, lovely? I always knew I had to act and sing and part of that was to prove my peers wrong who just constantly said I would never amount to anything. What I love about your question, Jordan, is you are full of potential. You have these wonderful abilities, these wonderful ideas, and I totally understand your fear about making a choice about one of them. I would go with the one thing that brings you joy and brings you a sense of freedom that you need to be creative. Being a primary school teacher is fabulous because children are endlessly inspiring. Being a museum creator, you would have a wonderful team around you of researchers. You would have knowledge and culture around you. I imagine you'd have a fair amount of silence and space as well. Do you need that? Does that bring you joy? Because that is completely on the other side of the spectrum to being a primary school teacher. 
An artist, exactly the same. You have autonomy. Or a music historian, well, then you're involved with sound. Which one, when you approach, fills your heart with light and joy? Go with that, because out of the four choices you've made for yourself, you can approach those at any time in your life. At 21, do what your soul, your body energy and your spirit is telling you to do. And you find that in the joy you experience as soon as you think about either of them. And good luck Bear Jordan. You, just looking at the question, I know you've got a bright future. Tony, this is a question for both of us. If you could time travel just once, where and when would you go? After you. Okay, if I could time travel just once, where and when would I go? Oh, this has stumped me because I was going to go to part of my life and it was going to Belize in 1994 to give a concert at the REF base, the British REF base before it closed. And it was a very wild experience. Uh, this place in Belize was full of ecstatic officers uh, and servicemen who were about to travel back home to the UK. And it was magical for me. And I gave a concert with my band and it was utterly wild. And we were on paradise. And the next day, the whole of my band were put on a tiny desert island, no more than twice the size of this kitchen. It had three palm trees and we had a huge icebox full of food and water and beer. And we were left there for the day. We were in paradise. So I would love to revisit those two incredibly special days in Belize in 1994. How about you? I've been almost despondent choosing my one moment to go to. That's not good. Ah, Why? Well, there's, there's so many moments I would like to visit, like construction of the pyramids, parting of the Red Sea, yeah. when Louis Armstrong caught the boat, up river in 1919 from New Orleans to Chicago. I say, hey, Louis, what are you doing? Are you aware that there's going to be a lot of people in the future that says jazz has died when you get on this boat? Or would it be muddy waters plugging in into an amplifier, 47, 48 in Chicago? <sighs> Who knows? Or would it have been... Would have... See, I'm despondent. I can't, I'm sorry, I can't come up Those with Those are moment. great answers. You see, I stuck within my lifetime knowing it's been a relatively safe time within history. I, 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 the things that interest me, I wouldn't want to visit as a time traveler. I'd be too scared. There's no antibiotics. You don't know if you're going to get clean water. You don't know if you're going to get food. And sadly, some of those still occur in the world today in this present time. But if I was going to go back and meet Joan of Arc, it would not be a safe time in history. So your answers are absolutely fabulous, Robert. Thank you. Robert, this is an incredibly important question, which I think you need to lead. Fabio, I haven't touched my music instrument for about three years. I believe I've become afraid of music at some point. How do, how do I build my relationship with music? Music is a friend, a constantly available friend that so wishes to enter our lives that we, it's just beyond comprehension. So please don't be afraid of music. Music would love to enter your life. All you have to do is open the front door and say, music, come on in. I have a very strange relationship with music because I find silence so nourishing and I get all my best ideas when sitting in silence because nature sounds so amazing and I find my love of music getting back into it through just simply listening to birds who sing because they can. They sing because they're showing off. And sometimes nature can get me back into music, but other times classical music can draw me back into music. 
I find that my ears and my emotional state are so closely linked, I have to be really careful of not only what I listen to, but the volume of what I listen to. And if you're feeling afraid of music because it's challenging you, just listen to the world. Because one of the rarest things in this physical life is we are allowed to have audio, we're allowed to hear. In outer space, there's silence. So it is a gift. And if you need to work your way into it, I'd say meditate in the park. If, if you can, meditate where there is natural sound and see how that affects your feelings towards music. And thank you so much for that question. So Robert, what is the magic chord today? Well, I've been giving this some thought, lovey, and I, these questions are so good and so interesting and there's so many possibilities. I tend to wilt in front of all that is available. Be positive about it. These are fabulous questions. I believe I've just said that they are fabulous questions. However, so I, here's one of the things I've been thinking of. action to unseat the hold of monkey mind. Fabulous. So there's two ways of doing this. One is where it's essentially four beat, four notes to the beat, or there's the triplet version. Anyway, there we are. Have fun, and we'll see if I've got any better next week. <laughs> Sounds really good to me. Everybody out there, thank you for joining us. We send you love. We wish you health, luck, happiness. We wish you clarity, and we wish you everything in the world that your heart desires. Bless you. Please be well and stay safe. And Sunday lunch tomorrow is really wicked. Mm -hmm.